Welcome to part two of the divergence theorem. Using the divergence theorem, we can determine the flux of a vector field across a surface. The theorem states that the total divergence of a vector field in a solid region V is equal to the total flow across the boundary surface S. The conditions are that V must be a solid region bounded by S oriented by a unit normal vector directed outward. And also our partial derivatives here for div f must be continuous on v. So this shows the relationship between a triple integral over a solid region and the surface integral over a surface. And this is the three-dimensional version of the flux form of Green's theorem. Let's go and take a look at our second example. We want to determine the flux of the given vector field across the surface z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared and z equals 0. Before we do this, let's go and take a look at it graphically. So here we see our surface in yellow and our vector field in purple. If the value that we determine is positive, that means the net flow across the surface would be outward and the total divergence of the vector field in this solid would be outward. And if it's negative, it would be inward. Let's go ahead and determine the flux. So we're going to have the triple integral of div f dv. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x, that's going to give us x plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y is going to give us z plus the partial derivative of h with respect to z is going to give us negative x. Let's replace differential v with dz dy dx this time. So the limits of integration for z, z is bounded by the plane and the surface, so it'll be from 0 to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Now for the limits of integration for y and x, let's go ahead and sketch the xy trace. Setting z equal to 0, and then squaring both sides of the equation, we would have x squared plus y squared equals 4. So we have a circle with radius 2 centered at the origin. We can see that visually by rotating this graph, as you see here. I think we'll end up converting this to cylindrical coordinates. Let's go ahead and set this up using rectangular coordinates first. So for limits of integration for a y, they must be expressed as a function of x. So solving this for a y would give us plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. So the lower limit would be negative square root 4 minus x squared all the way to positive square root 4 minus x squared. And then x would be from negative 2 to positive 2. And as you can see, this would be pretty messy to do. Let's go ahead and simplify this and convert it to cylindrical coordinates. Notice our integrand is just going to be z, so we'll have z and then an extra factor of r dz dr d theta. Well z goes from 0 to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared, so it'll be from 0 to the square root of 4 minus r squared. Remember r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared r will be from 0 to 2, and theta will be from 0 to 2 pi. Let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next page. And you grab the respect to z, we're going to have r times z squared over 2, Replacing z with square root of 4 minus r squared, we're going to have 1 half r times 4 minus r squared. And then when z is 0, we'll have 0. Let's go ahead and distribute here. We're going to have 2r minus 1 half r cubed. So 
So we'll have 2 times r squared over 2, that'll be r squared, minus 1 half times r to the fourth over 4, so minus 1 eighth r to the fourth. Subbing in 2 for r, we'll have 4 minus 2 to the fourth is 16 divided by 8, that's 2, so 4 minus 2. So we have 2 theta. Looks like we have 4 pi for our flux. So again, we have a positive value, which means the total divergence of the vector field in this solid region is outward, as well as the flow across the surface. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching.